you see highlighted here Luke 8 14 and that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection now this is the parable of the sower and a man goes out with the gospel and preaches and there were four events to his sowing and the thorns is one of them and here's fruit from the sower and the thorns grow and the thorns were in the earth as a result of of Adam sinning against God God said because you ate the fruit that I, I told you not to eat thorns shall grow and we see the characteristic here as well it's the people are choked because of cares because of riches and because of pleasures of this life and the result is no fruit to perfection now let's go to the parallel verse of mark chapter 4 verse 18 all right mark 4 18 right there and these which are sown among thorns such as hear the word the gospel they hear it and the cares of the world <clears throat> and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things and Paul calls lust coveting enter in and choke the word and it becomes unfruitful so what comes out of these two verses is the fact is no fruit so you get a Christian who's saved they've heard the gospel they get saved not you know, the thing is not everybody gets saved broads the way that leads to destruction many go there at strays the gate and few not all Christians are going to get rewards not all Christians are going to get gold, silver, and precious stones. They're going to walk away from the judgment seat of Christ empty with just their salvation by Jesus. And they're not going to have any fruit. They're not going to have anybody. I've got people in heaven and going to heaven because God used me to put the word out. I don't want to say they got saved because of me because I had nothing to do with salvation. I sold the seed. I preached the gospel. And as a result, they turned to Jesus Christ as their Savior. That's fruit. No fruit. Uh, no fruit. Become unfruitful. And we had back here Luke 8. Where was it? 8. said no fruit to perfection <clears throat> when a Christian does not bear fruit he has not become perfect and perfect don't mean complete it means you've done to the best of your ability I mean there are times I, I pass people up not giving them gospel tracts I'll slide people up it's wrong but other times I try to get the gospel out I mean I'm not a hundred percent planner I wish I was, but I'm not. There are other Christians better than what I do. And then there are Christians who don't do nothing at all. And, well, they're choked because cares and riches and pleasures of this life accrues amusement park going sailing going on a plane going somewhere family are more important than god is 
I don't want to witness because I'll lose my job. I've lost two, two jobs because I was a Christian. I lost two jobs because I was a Christian. And God's taking care of me. I don't want to tell my family because, you know, I won't get by to the Listen, I've had seven-eighths of my family say, hey, get away from me. I'm tired of you. I don't want to hear it. You're, you're you're weird. You're in a cult. You're too frenetic about the Bible. And you know what? I don't care. I'll tell you one thing right now. I'm getting to the point right now. There, there's only a handful of my family members left. Most of them have, have died. And some have gone to heaven. Amen. Glory to God. Some have gone to hell. But I'll tell you one thing. I may have sent them with the Bible, but those that I feel maybe have gone to hell, they could have gotten saved. <clears throat> I told them about Jesus. I told them about the gospel, and I witnessed to them. I don't feel no regret. I don't feel no, no hardship because they've died and maybe gone to hell. I've done what I could. I've done what the Bible tells me to do. And I lost friendship with them. I lost family ship with them. I, I lost fellowship with them. I don't care. You know, if you don't want to walk with Jesus Christ, you don't want to follow Jesus Christ, get off the wagon. Because I'm going to go up ahead and I'm going to serve the Lord. It's that plain and simple. And there are people who will have no fruit because they don't want to offend anybody. They don't want to lose anything. They'd rather be happy, and they'd rather be, you know, rewarded. They'd rather have fun, which is not found in the Bible. But look at here, Hebrews. Hebrews 11, the great faith chapter, verse 25. I'm going to read a remarkable passage here. This is about Moses, verse 24, but 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God, than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Do you see that? Do you see what the Holy Spirit put in the Bible? There is pleasure with sin. And there are people who have been choked by, they got saved, they have been choked with the Word of God producing their life because the pleasures of sin. They won't read the Bible because it'll take precious time out of their busy activity. They won't study the Word of God because, you know, the, the employee handbook, college courses, the, the little thing behind the, the airplane seat in case the plane crashes. The brochures about where you're going to go in the summer. There are pleasures of sin, Hebrews 11, 25, and there is affliction with the people of God. There it is, Hebrews 11, 25. Many don't want to suffer the affliction. We had a guy, he come to the farmer's market with us. And he didn't come back after a while. He was with us for a while and he didn't come back. He didn't like that people came up and yelled at him. And then people yelled at him because I was preaching the word of God. He got affliction and had afflictions and he didn't want to suffer. And he, never, he didn't come back. That's a shame. It's a shame to the fact is that some people... Don't realize serving the Lord is affliction. Marvel not, my brethren, the world hates you. Know that the world hated me before it hated you. That's the words of Jesus. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And there are Christians that say, no. I want the pleasures. I want to enjoy. I want to be happy. I want
the cares, the riches, and the pleasures. I want the trips. I want the vacations. I want the job. I want the money. I want my family. I don't want to serve the Lord. I'll take the pleasures of sin. Now, I don't know if we're going to cast crowns before Jesus Christ. Maybe, probably. I mean, the Bible says the 24 elders does it. I don't know about us, but if we do, I'm not saying we don't, but if we cast our crowns before Jesus Christ, there are going to be many Christians in glory. When we go to cast our crowns, they're going to put their hands on their head and they're going to find a bald head. When, when Christians get their inheritance in the millennium, there's going to be Christians who are not going to get no inheritance. When the fire is put to the works at the judgment seat of Christ, many Christians are going to find just ashes. And no gold and no silver and no precious stone. Many Christians are going to hear no word of Jesus well done. And they may have had their pleasure, they may have had their fun, they may have had their cares here on this world. Sect thy afflictions on things above, not things on the earth. But when they get to glory and they are eternally home in New Jerusalem, they're not going to be so happy. They're going to be ashamed. Because they're going to see the Christian that they knew and sometimes despise. There's going to be a lot of Christians in heaven. They're going to see me walking around crowns and rewards and hear well done. And they're going to even be more angry and envious that, oh, I didn't like him on the earth. All he talked about was Jesus. All he did was pass out gospel tracts. All he did was say Christmas is wrong. All he did said this was wrong. This is wrong. That's wrong. Go preach the gospel. That's good. Read your Bible. That's good. Pray. That's good. Everything else I liked and I had pleasure in, he said it was wrong. But I didn't like that. And I'll stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. Well done. That person will stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. Right, next. Next. And that's an example of Moses. And Moses... When Israel came out and they're in the wilderness, he still suffered affliction because he would not do the play. We want food. We want food. We want water. We want food. Come on, Aaron, make that golden calf and let's do the boogie woogie. Moses and Joshua, uh-uh. And a lot of people in the wilderness went to hell. A lot of people in the wilderness, they offended God. Moses didn't. There are people who have dedicated their life, and they're saved, just as much saved as I am, and they want cares, they want riches, and they want the pleasures of this life, not life eternal. And for that, they get no fruit perfection. There is nobody waiting in heaven for them. Okay, they may have saved spouse. They had, may have saved children. But they had no part in that. There are people who are going to be in heaven. And they are in heaven because I please the Lord by doing what the Bible tells me to do and studying the Bible. There are people going to be in heaven that are going to earn rewards because I studied my Bible. I put forth what to do and what not to do. I separated the holy and from the unholy. And they're going to earn rewards because they listen to the word of God. And they're going to be preachers in heaven. They taught the unholy. Rather, I taught the holy 
And they're going to lose because they want the love of the congregation to love me and don't offend the congregation. Friend, that's the cares, the pleasures of this life, and there's no fruit. Chapter 4 again. Yeah, let me find here. In Mark chapter 4. <clears throat> we have the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things. There are preachers and pulpits. They want the congregation to be happy with them. And when Stolly comes along and preaches the truth, uh, Stolly, you got to shut up. Because you're offended the congregation. They may leave. They may not like me. Well, they didn't like Jesus. You know, most of the nation of Israel said crucify him. And very few were at the cross with him when he died. Paul had Christians turn on him. Paul had his own countrymen turn on him. Paul had the own Pharisees turn on him. Paul had uh, uh, had Jews turn on him. Paul had everybody in his life turn on him. Paul, you know, uh, Demas has forsaken me, going back to Thessalonica. And there are pastors who don't want that. They want everybody to love them and admire them. So I'm not going to say anything that's going to be offensive because they, the cares of the world, All are welcome in our church. You mean the world? The deceitfulness of riches. So what we're going to do is we're, we're, we're going to teach that the law for tithing. When we're not under the law. And the lust of other things enter in. Whatever it is that you desire, what you want. Oh, I, 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 I got to go see that movie actor. I got to go see that ball team. I got to go to the Super Bowl. Forget church. Forget serving the Lord. Forget reading the Bible. And you say, well, you know, Stanley, for, for 10 years now, you've gone to the Daytona 500 and you've gone on the Sunday. Yeah. And I've gone with two or more. The Bible says where two or three are gathered together. There I am. We go there spreading the gospel. We go there preaching the gospel. Jesus Christ is there. Jesus Christ is approved. Meanwhile, there are churches all across the world on a Sunday morning. Jesus Christ doesn't approve because Revelation chapter 3 says Jesus Christ is standing outside that door knocking. We're rich. We're great. We have no need of nothing. There's nothing wrong with the job. There's nothing wrong with making your family happy. Matter of fact, in 1 Corinthians 7, Paul says, listen, if you were to have money for a missionary or money to take your wife out to eat, you take your wife out to eat. You ask, well, my wives are in heaven, but that's how I treat my wives. We went out to eat much. My wife, she, she was ill and sick and had much pain. I take one look at her and say, All right, honey, you look in pain. And she'll say, she is. Why don't you go lay down, and when you get up, we'll go out to eat some. You think about where you want to go to eat because you're too painful to cook. I'm not saying go off into a high mountain and go live in a cave, uh, into in a cave, and be you know a guru. But I'm saying, you know what? You gotta give the Bible sometimes. You gotta give prayer sometimes. You gotta be witnessing sometimes. You gotta give God sometimes. And there are Christians that don't. They're saved, and they're going to heaven. But once they get to heaven, their happiness was here on earth. And the question comes to be, let me ask you one question, we'll close.
Is there anybody in heaven right now or going to heaven when they die and you had part of their salvation, whether you planted or you watered? Have you planted someone to go into heaven? Have you watered someone to go into heaven by God increasing their soul being saved? Is there somebody in heaven that when you get there, they're going to wrap their arms around you and say, thank you. Thank you for preaching. Thank you for that gospel track. Thank you for supporting that missionary. If you had parts of why I'm here, let's go see Jesus. And too many Christians are don't have anybody in heaven by their works. Too many Christians are not going to have any gold. They're not going to have any precious stone. And they're not going to have any silver. They're not going to have any rewards. They're not going to have any crowns. They're not going to have an inheritance. But they're in glory. And their reward was everything they did on this earth and in this world. For, the, for this pleasure, this is for say it. For the cares of this world. Go back to Luke chapter 8. And I, I want to see this one thing. One, one verse. One verse. Right here. Because the pleasures of life. Because the pleasures of life. And Moses didn't enjoy the pleasures of sin. He didn't say he didn't have a pleasurable life. He didn't enjoy the pleasures of sin. It's a pleasure serving the Lord. Man, the best time of going to a, to a, to the Hayward family ministry is when we get in the car. We talk about what kind of day we had. Glory to God, not yourself. 